quiet presence this year for the Pistons, but in the last few weeks, he's picked up his play and perhaps more importantly, taken on a more vocal role in Piston Matters. Quinn Buckner sat down with him this week and got his thoughts on a variety of topics. I make no apologies for my game uh, throughout my career. Uh, the only respect and admiration I need is of the 12 teammates on our ball club. And as long as they're all for me and I'm all for them and I have their respect, that's all that matters. And whatever the general public thinks about my style of play, I really could care less. Lambeer's character is uh, unlike by many. I don't believe this. Lane Beer gets in a fight seemingly once a week. How'd I do? Well, that all depends on what's being judged. If you're looking for the villain of the NBA, that's what Bill Lambeer calls himself, then the fans score him a perfect 10. And if you're judging candidness, speaking your mind, Lambert does just as well. How many players would grab the headlines going into the playoffs by being very critical of their general manager for trading veteran players and for turning the coach into a lame duck? Uh, I felt it best for my own peace of mind and my own good just to speak my mind and my heart, uh, not only to our teammates, but just to get it out into the public sector. What basically it was simmering in our organization and um, I make no apologies for it. It had to come out and it came out and now we continue to play. You're very concerned about the nature of your organization in the future and I, I, and I applaud that. Do you think that Jack McCluskey was helped understanding how the team felt when you made your comments? Um, I don't know. I, I, don't, I can't speak for how Jack McCluskey felt about what I said. Um, I can only tell you that your players must play for each other they must love each other and love your organization and your organization must love your players in return and if you don't have that you're an also ran if you do have that you'll always be successful your club uh, has had some significant involvement in the Olympics one way or the other you, you <laughs> he got, might say that <laughs> <laughs> you got Chuck Daly as the head coach there's some you know cloud as to whether or not Isaiah should or should not be on the team mm -hmm. let's start with Chuck how is his involvement with the Olympic uh, team affected your your Pistons team? It has to be a source such because we have a couple, three guys that have credentials to be on the Olympic team. We have the head coach on the Olympic team. We had a guy on the selection committee and for none of our players to be on there it's going to cause a slight bit of friction. You have to be honest about it. We lose Chuck Daly for next season. How, how disorienting is that for the team? <sighs> Chuck Daly is a difficult subject to address because he doesn't have a contract for the future, so where's our team going? I mean, you can't just live for today. You have to have some futuristic ideas um, as far as integrating some of your players in there, because it's, it's hard to take a team and just say, this is what we're gonna do business today without any eye on the future. And that's been part of our problem this year is we haven't had any eye on the future and what direction are we headed? I think my competitive nature has something to do with the way I'm perceived. Um, I don't give an inch at all on the, on the court. I don't give anybody any respect. Uh, I think that's the major problem with a lot of other players is I don't respect their game. If they happen to get in the way, well, that's not my fault. That's their fault. Um, stay out of our way. We're coming through trying to win the game. And in professional athletics, that's the difference between being good and being a champion. At the end of the playoffs last year, you guys walked by the Bulls and didn't shake their hand. Is, was that intentional? It was intentional on my part. Um, I felt that Michael Jordan um, may be a very good, outstanding basketball player, but in no way does that make him a better person than anybody. And for him to say and to make value judgments on us as individuals where he does not know us as individuals, all he knows is our style of play but to make value judgments on us as individuals and to put them into the public medium on the newspapers or on television, um, who is he? I mean, it, it is, he, all he does is play basketball. In the, in the world, he's this big. I mean, he may be up there because he has publicists and media and, and pumping him up, but as an individual down-to-earth heart person, he, he has, I mean, who is he? Who cares about him? I make no apologies for my game uh, throughout my career. Whatever the general public 
thinks about my style of play, I really could care less. In the NBA, rivalry is bitterly epitomized by the Detroit Pistons and Chicago Bulls. En route to their five consecutive Eastern Conference Finals and two world titles, the bad boys of the Motor City use their physical and intimidating style to bury the Bulls. It left Michael Jordan with vivid memories of frustration and of painful defeats. Perhaps that explains the fervor the Bulls displayed last year while finally overcoming their nemesis to the north. In the end, in the Bulls' long-awaited moment of glory, the Pistons walked out. No explanation necessary. After all, this is a rivalry. Today, on the eve of the playoffs, the Pistons have come back to the Windy City to test themselves against the benchmark of the NBA to leave an impression and to surely add another chapter to the NBA's most heated rivalry. Many of the fans here booing uh, Bill Lane Beer are doing so out of residue from uh, previous grievances. That, yes, they did not see the, uh, the pregame interview with uh, Quinn. Jordan goes to the hook shot. Have they seen it? The boos might have been even louder because uh, Bill lashed out at at Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. We'll play a piece of it a little bit later on. Last touch by, by Lane Beer. And we'll also hear from Jordan. We asked for his reaction, and you will hear that a bit later on. Timeout call with 2.59 remaining in the first. Earlier today on Showtime, in an interview with Quinn Buckner, Bill Lane Beer strongly criticized Michael Jordan, as we just mentioned a moment ago, in explaining why the Pistons walked off the court in last year's playoff before the game ended. Lane Beer upset, he said, with Jordan's harsh statements about Detroit players prior to the start of their playoff series last year. Now, here's Lane Beer, a piece of what he had to say, followed by Jordan's response. Only who is he? Who cares about him? It's a, it's a guy with an opinion. Everybody's got their opinion. You got an opinion, I got an opinion, Bill Lambeer's got an opinion, and it's going to be totally different at a certain times. So it doesn't bother me to see other people give their opinions about certain things. If you're going to ask me my opinion, I'm going to give it to you. But it doesn't bother me as a person in terms of what I have to do in the basketball court. I'm going to go out and I'm going to play. And I'm aware of what his opinions are, but it's not going to affect the way I live. And and I have an opinion. I don't think these yes. two teams like each other a whole lot. And I think that Michael Jordan is just taking the middle of the road approach just trying to be a nice conservative guy but that burns him up down deep inside you know like when uh, these two clubs together it is almost a national hockey league type mentality all the bickering back and forth setting things up intimidation mind games who who is your favorite guy to mess with always the best player um you always want to you know find a way to stop the best player when we were playing against Jordan, every time Jordan came in the lane, three people went over there and knocked him on his ass. The best player, you have to make them either afraid or they want to pass the ball to somebody else who's not as good or not going to make the shot. So if you, you try to make them do something they don't normally do, whatever the cost. In the four, have the Celtics outscored the Detroit Pistons? Biggest lead for either team right now. And Dumars is fouled with one second on the clock. Detroit and Lane Beer is close to a technical foul and he's got it. We're going to see why he's upset. Bird is trying to fight through the pick and uh, they, he deposits Bird down there and he wanted a foul on Bird. Chuck Daly saying, my man doesn't argue that. That's why the foul technical. Lane Beer is still man. Better cool off or he'll be gone. He's... Oh, in and out. Lambeer, yes, he should be called for that. That was intentional. He intentionally was swinging his elbows. And that was, you'll, you'll see it here, very yeah. obvious. He caught Parrish with one. He didn't hit anyone now, but it's a violation yeah. if you swing them. And 
he caught Parrish with one early on in the first half, and Bird got caught with a, uh, a Levingston elbow yeah. early on, too, that got his attention. You know, it's hard to say. It's not like they're doing it intentionally, but coaches will tell a big guy. Away from the game, Bill's soft demeanor couldn't be in sharper contrast with his maligned public image. It seems like ever since the Pistons have really been competitive, all of a sudden he's been labeled as a dirty player. And I think they see a big guy who can't run and can't jump. And uh, some guys feel threatened by it, I think. And, um, you know, he's not an angel by any sort of stretch of the imagination, but I don't think anybody else in the league is either. Detractors place Lambeer in the wake of controversy. But to help him cope and gain a clearer perspective, he seeks the calmer waters of his hobbies, including power boating and a passion for fishing. You know, it's, this is quite a contrast to some of the opposing arenas when they want my blood. But I like to get out and fish. It's so, it's so peaceful. You spend all your life in front of 20,000 people hollering and screaming, you know, scrutinizing every move you make. And I'll fish sometimes from 12 o'clock till 4 in the morning during the playoffs because I'm not able to sleep. After a game, until about that time. Not the biggest, but it's a fish. No other piston captures Detroit's bad boy image like Bill Lambeer, a man who has accepted misconception and learned how to ride out the tide.